Damn, son, where'd you find this? <laughs> Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard live on KEXP.
Thank you. It's King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard live in the KEXP studios, one of our favorite bands to have stopped by. Thank you so much. Thank so you. great to have you. Hi, Infest the Rat's Nest just came out on Friday, August 16th on Flightless Records and ATO. Go out and get it. You've got a tune to KEXP Seattle. All right, here we are for the... I forgot to count up how many times you've been live in studio here. Anyone know? That's your oh, first question. About it I think it's five. This five. is our fifth time. All right. We've done six, so... That's right, the Murlocs were they're, just here. That yeah, they're fun. a little bit better than us. That's our goal, to try to get you in five times a year now. You set the bar with five albums in 2017. Well, you had a record come out earlier this year, Fishing for Fishies, and Infests the Rat's Nest just came out on Friday. Very exciting. A thrash metal album. Stu, I read somewhere that you said that you discovered metal music at a young age and then you wanted to play it, but shredding was harder than you thought. <laughs> it was hard to play that music. Is that true? Yeah, that's true. I think, I think that kind of music was maybe the first music that I <clears throat> heard where I thought, I love music. This is sick. This is cool. Um, and I think then getting a little bit older and getting into some other music and being inspired by different stuff and sort of almost forgetting about that kind of music and then coming back to it as an adult is really fresh. It seems pretty fun. I mean, watching you all just do that last set everybody's definitely working overtime. And Eric and Michael, you are just like drumming at mock speed. And a lot of our listeners want to know how it is that you create those drum parts. Like, how do those come together? Who takes the lead? I don't know if it's different from album to album, but I mean, the precision with which you play together is I, so I fun to watch. definitely takes the lead. <laughs> I follow. Well, yeah. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. Um, yeah, I guess with the drum parts, um, I mean, there is like a few, there is like a few moments where um, me and Eric do different stuff, um, but yeah, mostly we just keep it the same, keep it, keep it tight, tight, loosely tight. Yeah, Eric's um, definitely keeping a close eye on you. I love watching where he's checking. Am I yeah, with him? Am I keep with him? Keep it loose, and Cavs keeps it tight, and then it somehow <laughs> works out all right. Yeah. I think. <laughs> but we, we've we've just been. I mean, we've. Yeah, we've just been doing it for drumming together for a while now. So everyone always asks, like, how we lock in so well. But it's just from playing together um, so much. That's all I can really say. Rat's Nest was pretty hard to put together because uh, Cavs basically recorded and wrote all the drum parts first and finished the album. And then we, like, all learnt it together as a group for touring. So that was, um, yeah, we all kind of had to build our chops up get practicing every day because the, the songs were so like hard and fast but yeah it was a fun challenge yeah Lucas you just got some bombastic bass parts on there it seems like you have a lot more leads than normal I don't know if it's just the style of music that makes it seem that way but it's fun it seems like everybody kind of turns to you quite a bit during this one and then you just fly in yeah yeah I mean yeah like Eric said it's really fun to play I think well, Joe played most of the bass on the album I had some time off and I yeah like Eric said had to really just practice at home for for weeks on my own before I could play all this stuff that the guys have recorded. Yeah, yeah. It was kind of good to kind of be obsessive with an instrument again, like just practicing every day at home because I probably haven't done that since I was like 16 or something. So, yeah, it's been a fun challenge. There's some grand themes on this record, and you've always had such a great visual aesthetic. I love the videos. The videos are intense. The music's intense. The themes are intense. Tell me a little bit about what this record is about, and also want to talk a little bit about making the videos for this, because they're, they're intense. This record's about a lot of things, but I think more than any record we've made before, it's probably uh, coming from a place of uh, realistic stuff that's kind of going on and probably freaking people out at the moment um, and kind of extrapolating from there and seeing maybe where we're heading. Yeah, that's, that's kind of the main theme of the record and then it takes it to a place in the end that maybe is some place in the future. Um, but, yeah, thinking about um, things that are going on on planet Earth right now is really scary and it's way scarier to me than any horror movie. So that's, that's the genesis. 
So there's like these three horrific <laughs> videos out now. I mean, the themes of them are pretty intense, yet they're, they seem like you're sort of having fun making them as well. Talk a little bit about the videos and the visual style, because you're working with a new artist on this one as well. All right, we worked with our, our friend John, who's an amazing filmmaker. Um, and he's, his observation on human nature, which was something that I probably touched on lyrically but maybe didn't say so succinctly, that um, <clears throat> the interesting thing about humans is that we are kind of going down laughing at the moment and we're having a good time as we go down. And I think that was the main general theme of all the videos. I can absolutely see that when you describe that. Well, I put some questions out to our uh, fan, or your fans of the band on KEXP social media. We got a huge response, and I thought it'd be fun just to kind of ask some of those. Of course, the biggest question that people ask over and over is, um, you know, what the next theme is. I mean, you've covered so many different genres, and do you think about that? in advance or do you think boy it'd super be fun if we could tackle this one next or dive into another sound usually um songs usually we're in either one or two phases we're either finishing a record or we're starting everything at the same time and i think at the moment we're starting everything at the same time we have a bunch of different songs kind of floating around that maybe don't fit together a handful that maybe feel like they could be on the same record but I think it's important for us sometimes to just be open and just let ideas come and then to kind of see where they fit a little later on. Well, I can't wait to see what comes up next. People have asked, um, what's been your hardest record to record, whether creatively or practically, and or conversely or along the same lines, I mean, the easiest or the hardest to record? This might be different for everyone. Well, let's hear what but everyone has to say. I would say fishies. Hardest to record? Hardest because... Um, we, we wrote it in a kind of super improv way and we recorded all these loose, disparate kind of jams that didn't really have that much structure and then we kind of tried to turn them into succinct songs. And it's hard to do that. We did a similar thing with sketches, I think, and probably a similar thing with quarters, but we let those records meander a lot more, whereas Fishies we wanted to make a lot more concise. It, was just, it just took a long time. Does anyone else have thoughts on that? I can vouch for that. But I'd probably say on a technical level, um, probably Polygon Dwanland. Just in terms of like a challenge to ourselves as to like how to I don't know, navigate that kind of mathy time signature world without making it kind of overtly I don't know, um, kind of cold or something, which I feel like can happen with some music like that. Kind of burying those kind of ideas or like wacky time signatures within a song and then making it have groove or like kind of melody and feel. And then maybe on a couple of listens later, you just realize, oh, wait, that's actually kind of crazy what they're doing. I don't know, that was kind of a fun challenge. A lot of people ask about that one. Also, the complexity of that. Some people, especially around that record, Polly Wong, Polly Gondwan Gondwan Lin, Lin, um, <laughs> are curious how long it takes to write a record. I imagine it's different for all of them. Yeah, definitely different for all of them and, and um, always a crossover. That's interesting to know. So, boy, you're never li living in just one world at I the same time. I think sometimes we're just finishing a record, but um, we've, we, I don't think we've ever stopped and made a record from start to finish without kind of working on the one previous or the one coming up or the two coming up. Or there's, you know, or there's always songs on every record that have been around for a year or two or more. Unsurprisingly, the second most commented on question was, please come to where we live, Indonesia, <laughs> South America, Chile, Brazil, Argentina, come to Pensacola, Michigan's Upper Peninsula, Finland, will you visit Mexico again, um, Egypt, people are dying for you to come and to see you live really is a transcendent experience, but you're going to new places every year, it seems, expanding your tours all the time, what are some of the most fun places that you've been to? Um, in the last few years and some of the most fun venues that you kind of have played for the first time? Uh, Japan. <laughs> yeah. Recently we all fell in love with Japan. Yeah. It was a pretty amazing experience. Did Mexico last year? That was fresh. Yeah, oh. we kind of do try and do one tour a year where it's just more of a holiday and we only do like, you know, a few shows and 
kind of spend like a couple of weeks there. That's so nice. Japan was like that, and so was Mexico last year. Yeah. Someone wants to know who takes care of the Zanzibar gem while you're on tour. As dead. <laughs> uh oh. Right <laughs> ages ago. That's so long ago. <laughs> so hard to kill, but. Our studio, a dark studio, did it somehow. An airless studio. Oh, I didn't mean to bring things down. Um, are there any pre-show traditions or rituals that the band does? I saw a bit of stretching in the hallway, <laughs> Eric. Yeah, definitely a few stretches. Oh, we've been yeah, yeah, mindfulness stretching, med- meditation, mindfulness. Oh, yeah. We all um, sit down in a group and meditate for that's fifteen never minutes. Happened. And we've talked about it. <laughs> we talk about it a lot. Eric we discovered don't. meditation maybe everyone, two or three weeks ago. And no, thinks he, he talks it, about so. everyone. He talks about it a lot. <laughs> gets in the zone and their body and minds <laughs> connect. And it's not Man, true. Yeah. Yeah. We have pa- past the playlist does that. It's oh, really, yeah. We we've also been dancing to. Yeah. We have been dancing a lot. We have yeah. been dancing. A- Ambrose's um, pasta playlist. He has made a playlist that he always puts on when he makes pasta, and it's a really good playlist. Mid 20th yeah. century Italian rap pack. American rap yeah. pack music. Really good. The pasta playlist. Mm-hmm. You should post that online so yeah. everybody else can do That's the next theme, by the way. <laughs> it's, it's a private playlist. <laughs> Secret. Um, someone asked, I want to hear about the larger movement um, that you're creating through Flightless Records. How'd the label get started, and how do you choose the artist for the label? You've had some pretty great people on Flightless. Yeah, um, I guess we just put out stuff that um, we like, I suppose. It's kind of, it always just started with Giz being the first band, and then um, I guess like the Murlocs and a few other bands that kind of were made up of. Um, friends in the same music kind of scene Um, but now it's definitely grown into like its own kind of fully fledged thing so which is real cool and yeah kind of just always um, on the lookout for new stuff I guess mainly um, Melbourne bands because the the scene is so incredible and there's so much great stuff so I'm kind of always just um, trying to go to gigs when I'm back home and listen to stuff Um, yeah, I don't know. It's, um, I guess if I like it, I'll, I'll sign it. <laughs> Someone was asking, ask Eric if Flightless is hiring. <laughs> and I saw that you had the band. It's a lot of work um, to do there. Stuffing vinyl online the other day. You posted a cool video of everyone putting together the new uh, record on vinyl. So I guess you've probably got all the staff you need. Yeah, we're, we're always in a band this big. for more. We're always trying to grow. And um, I think we've got, yeah, we've got enough for the our space at the moment maybe if we get a bigger warehouse we can add some more people one day <laughs> um someone else said after the infamous 2018 flightless crash when everyone tried buying their reissue vinyl that you sent out stickers with each vinyl that says gizfest confirmed and they said will we ever find out if there is an overarching gizfest over albums or are we just reading too much into it of course there is. <laughs> it's, all, it's all thought out. The last album is already written. We so like, wrote it 20 yeah, years ago. It was ago. all conceived 10 years ago <laughs> when we started the band. Endgame as well. So. <laughs> How ominous. Just wait for it. <laughs> um, on that note, when or where is the Nonagon movie we were promised? Jace, where's Jace? Jace Juicy, yeah. he's hiding here somewhere. He's trying to hide he's working from all on the fans. Right now. He's, he's trying to make posters. Everyone. <laughs> He's trying to make posters. Procrastinating. Will we ever hear Cookie sing live? I'd love to hear his smooth vocals. Give the man yeah. a microphone. <laughs> Talk about this. We yes, try all the time. We need to get we Cookie bully him. Like, bully him. He's got one well, right they now. They took my mic away like five years ago. <laughs> He's been bitter ever since. <laughs> so bitter ever since. You so demanded it be taken away. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I feel like we've. I sung. I feel like you've done we've songs like maybe like a couple year of years ago. Years. Yeah. No, we did um we did Giz Fest. In Giz Fest last year yeah. we did some. Oh yeah. We want to do like pipe on the back the back. <laughs> it didn't band. go down well, so we thought uh, yeah. no. we'll oh, take it away again. Goodness. Yeah, we'll just take his mic away again. I love yeah. it how we're getting seven answers at once on that one. Everybody wants to hear Cook's voice. When will Joey be releasing his own side project? I want to get juicy with that record whenever it breaks the light of day. Who knows? May never happen. Someone's waiting to get juicy with that. <laughs> um, we what, juicy. I'm actually curious about this question as well. What did you do with the People Vulture after filming the music video? That is one of my Took favorite things yeah. of well, all time. It, it went around. It's a good a story. It was taken by, um, no, we took it to Giz Fest. Now, yeah, we first took it on a boat to Tasmania oh, yeah. and we <laughs> set it up at a, a show at a festival there. It's kind of like an arts festival and they asked if we could bring it. So we worked out, because it's massive, it's really hard to carry, worked out put it on a van and then travelled it on a boat over to Tassie then got it back and then we took it to Gizfest 
And I think we just put it in the crowd and like all the fans like grabbed it and used it. And then apparently it's like in a fan's like basement or something. Yeah, it's, in <laughs> or it's in their bedroom. garage. That's what we yeah. heard. But we haven't seen it since. It just got taken after the... Send us, put send it out for hard send us a photo if you have it. Yeah. Who did those amazing acrobatics of the big fig wasp? Oh, yeah. That was insane. That was, um, that was actually Cookie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm very nimble. Yeah, he's very nimble. He's those massive are amazing. and nimble. Did you put out like a call for those? Somebody had to like source that. that yeah, it's, that. it's called, what was it called? Wushuing? Wushu? 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 Is that the style? That's, that's the style. What is it, Cookie? Um, yeah, Cookie, what is it? Movement. I think yeah, he's yeah, been training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think his I name think, is Tyler. I think Danny, uh, the guy who directed it or co directed <laughs> with Jace, he, um, he just sourced a. He was like a martial artist who could just do all the crazy stuff. He had a hit, hidden trampoline and he was doing tricks on it. It was really cool. <laughs> I bet you've got to stay nimble and kind of warmed up to be able to do that. That was yeah, insane. He was, he was a freak. Someone asked, who's the dad in the band? I know Lucas is literally a dad, <laughs> but is dad. he the dad of the band? Stu, yeah. He's been a dad of the band long before Am he I? became a dad. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Here's yeah, a weird yeah. Lucas, one. Lucas, Lucas wins. Say Lucas. <laughs> you always make literally, literally, literally most responsible and one. figuratively. Making smoothies, yeah. being nice. Make coffees for everyone. Do make like making coffee. Trustworthy. Make me breakfast. <laughs> Packing up your drums. Thanks. Um, <laughs> someone says, just Dad because bald. I'm curious, who's the best swimmer in the group? <laughs> Lucas that again. Yeah. 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 I was he's forced gonna, into competitive swimming from a young age. He's got a great bottom fly. Lucas's parents run a swimming school. Really? Yeah, yeah. All right. But, uh, yeah, I quit a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> Ambrose, do you have a go-to skateboarding trick? A go-to oh. skateboarding trick? Frontside uh, ducks, duck slide, uh, nollie. Na- chicken to the nub. <laughs> chicken, chicken to the chicken to the nub. Joe has a few of his own that he's made up over the years. Yes, yeah, um, skull and crossbones. <laughs> skull Is that one? <laughs> Um, no, not particularly. I don't know. Yes, you do. Uh, um, Angel yes, flip. Do. Oh, cool. Nice. Oh, I've seen you do nose slides. All right. Uh, I don't know. Kick flip. Oh, that's <laughs> so boring. boring. Okay. Boneless fandangle nub nub bone. Benny Harness. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a King Gizzard board? It seems like there should be. I've been trying to get it on the merch table for years, but... Come nah, on. Who's in charge of merch? T-shirts. It's Jace had a skateboarding company. What happened to that? Yeah, we could just use uh, those boards. That dissolved. That, that dissolved. Yeah, Chase had a ba- <laughs> skateboard company that went bankrupt. But um, now he's just got <gasps> 10,000 boards in his like, home. <laughs> so, yeah. um, he will hand paint everywhere. Yeah, if them, anyone wants to buy them, there's, there's a lot of boards sitting there. Well, you can paint some King Gizzard uh, artwork on them. Get mm-hmm. those on the merch table. Mm-hmm. Um, and finally, what are future plans for Gizfest? Uh, we're actually, I think we're going to do it in 2020. Uh, the next one will be in 2020 because we're going to Asia in November. So, um, yeah, Kiss Fest 2020, keep taking, an eye out. Taking a year off. Yeah, we're taking a year off to um, let the grass grow. And let Eric's hair grow back. Let my hair grow back and, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, thanks. It's super fun always to see all of you. Always a pleasure. Thanks for nice chatting. Thank you. Thanks, yes. KXP. Discover new music at listener-powered kexp.org. Damn, son, where'd you find this?